Approaching two minutes to play in the first quarter. Fletcher can't finish. And here comes Love. Love will take it all the way in, draws the foul, and one. Coast to coast and is able to finish with the contact. Great finish over Stramina with the and one. McQueen tight ropes the baseline, hits Lawton, feeds Boyd for another three. It's a fourth triple of the first quarter. Fortner has expected from Anaya Boyd, you know, she needed to get into some shape, had a bit of an injury from high school, but now that she's looking like she's getting in the game, but we have to tip our hat to McQueen. She was impressive and played very well in her absence, but it's great to have Kiera Fletcher back for this Georgia Tech ball club. And this is what Georgia Tech cannot do. In this zone, they cannot get stagnant. They have to move. And that's just a big-time shot. That's a long time. And that was a good team. They, I think that team went to the tournament. They sure did. Ramp around past Monacahia to Cardozo. Oh, was that pretty. Monacahia, she's serving up some dimes. Oh, she's serving up some dimes today. And we're not surprised. She's first in the ACC. There was one coach in the ACC that you could count on <laughs> to make a face mask look stylish. You knew it would be Coach Q. Yeah, Coach Q. <laughs> Jack is now doubling up the orange. That three, a rainmaker from Priscilla Williams. Cardoso, the rebound. Triggers the outlet to Monacahia. Williams, another one. Yes, ma'am. You know, this kid is, is tremendous and passionate. We, we spoke about it. She spent the 2019-2020 season fighting breast cancer and comes back this season. Two and a half minutes of our first half. Binkley Guidi with the turn and the score. 6-2 guard and capable of doing that. And keeping the arms up and down. How on earth did Love bank that in? What, there is nothing in the geometry textbook that might explain that shot. No, it doesn't. Sometimes you just can have good defense. It's just better offense. Monacahia rattles down the three. Williams make that Lewis defending. Hermosa raises up and hits. And that was the shot we talked about. Where the Tech's been there a few times and has just been able to capitalize shooting 10 to 13 from the free throw line. Now the Orange are last in the ACC in free throw percentage, but. That was telegraphed. Lewis saw that from a mile away. I mean, Fletcher saw that from a mile away. And when Lewis passed it, she was just able to make that or get that steal. Woo! You can hear that smack from <laughs> up here on the block. So said, not this time, love. Uh, I'm going to block this one. <laughs> Monica, he had the tight wow. rope and the reverse. Cuse deficit as we approach two minutes in the third quarter. Yeah, Georgia Tech in this second half can't really get a three-point shot to fall, but Lewis was able to get that mid-range jump shot. Monacaya being out, they needed some point production, and Lewis really stepped up, averaging about 17.6 points a game. Oh, Kubai with the up and under and with the offhand. Lawton peels around the screen, gets some daylight in the lane and drops it in. And that's what she's capable of doing. Lightning is the leading scorer for this Georgia Tech ball club, and she's going to need to score points if Georgia Tech wants to get a win. Now, Engsler responds with the land. An Islander. She's a hard-nosed, tough player, averaging a double-double off the bench for this Syracuse team, and she's just pretty consistent. And she lets it fly on the pick and pop for three. She's been able to capitalize and be aggressive in the paint. This is both free throws, though. Yeah. Off the skip, Stroutman up. <laughs> One possession game. Impressive for the senior to get to 1,000 points. Impressive for any player that can make and reach that accomplishment. Fletcher threads the needle to Kubai. Hermosa rolling, scooping, scoring. Lead is safe against Syracuse this year in the fourth quarter. They have been the fourth quarter queens. Cardoso catches the deflection and lays it in. Almost four minutes into our final quarter. Kubai measuring up Angsler, wriggles underneath her and lays her in. He doesn't have the right size to guard Lorella Kubai, but Lorella Kubai has been capitalizing on that. Oh, and Hermosa with the stuff on Cardoso. Kubai draws the double. Rotated to Love. Love as Williams hits the floor, knocks it in. Highly taught it recruits who are very talented, but Love was able to capitalize, get that uh, baseline shot to fall for Georgia Tech. It's a nice finish on that last possession for Syracuse. But Georgia Tech still trying to 
make something work in their half court sets. And <laughs> Lorella Kubai making it work with the fadeaway. Engsler misfires, and Fletcher bolts out of there with it. Has Hermosa over the shoulder. Two more for Hermosa, and Georgia Tech up 13. Based on how Kiara Fletcher started to get it going, making some nice passes, getting Hermosa back in, Kubai, and you just see she is continuing to show her presence. Nice shot. Really step up this season and show some junior and senior leadership for this team, and they've done well. Tremendous. Reviewing to see whether there may have been a... a Maybe in Contact, something intentional. dead ball, technical on love. Instead, it was just a common foul. As post players able to dish it to each other and give each other good looks. Another deep catch by Cardoso. What do you do about that? Syracuse can do right now. They're down a 11 points, but they need to try and score quickly. Not much time left in this game. Oh, that was an alley-oop from Monacahi to Cardoso. Her game, you can't even speak. It speaks volumes for itself and how she's played in this stretch in January and during this six-game win streak. McQueen to beat the shot clock. And a frustrating night for the Orange. Georgia Tech earns a sixth straight win. Our final score tonight for McCamish Pavilion.